Hello, I really hope you're well today. If you're like most of us, chances are at some point in your life or you might be suffering right now with a thing called plantar fasciitis. But don't worry, I got your back on this one because I'm gonna give you some awesome advice. I'm gonna give you my own personal research and almost three decades experience as a practitioner on how to fix this thing. And so I'm gonna start with how to identify the problem, then we're gonna go into how to treat it, and then we're gonna finish off with how to make sure this never happens again. Fair enough? Here we go. Okay, so fortunately, or maybe unfortunately, we have a, a client here today who's suffering with uh, heel pain, and uh, she agreed to do this video with us. Her name's Jane, and appreciate your appreciate your your support, Jane. Um, if when we approach the body, I'm going to ask you, uh, please, uh, not to compartmentalize the body, because this is a bit, one, of, especially if you're young doctors watching this. Uh, a lot of times we kind of read into things, and I'm asking you to read out of things. If we not take a utilitarian approach, but if we can look at the whole body and just make a mental footnote and, and just try to become a craftsman, try to, try to be uh, the best you can be at what you do. And so let's just take a look at a few things here. Uh, just a few general observations. If we look at Jane's foot, it's flaring out to the right here. Her right knee is kind of going in and right hip is going back. The right leg is pulling back. So we're going to make a mental footnote of all these things and then we're going to start looking a little closer towards the problem. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to orientate you with the structures or the major players involved with plantar fasciitis. Now, as you can see here, I just put a mark here, and that's the hallmark of where the pain generally is with, with plantar fasciitis. If you have it in both feet, or if you have swelling in the feet, or pain in, the, in the, the, the back here, or in the big toe, chances are it's not plantar fasciitis. It's something you, you might want to have a little bit more investigation on, have it checked by somebody. Okay, so, but this is generally in one foot, and here, this is generally the area marked here. Okay, I'm going to turn Jane's foot over here like this and you can see I, I marked three lines here and I really want you to pay attention to here because just because I want you to resist just because the problem or pain is down the foot it might not be the organic connection to where the problem is and this is in my experience I've always found with plantar fasciitis the problems up in here okay and so what I'm, I'm going to identify three big muscles here the first one here, this big long one here, is called the tibialis anterior. Now that's, that is the major player right here, this one here. And that goes right along the tibia, and you feel that. And as you go down there, and you feel that right there, Jane? You can feel, if you just go just, just a mild to moderate pressure here, you feel a little bit, little nodules there, okay? And these are little calcifications, okay? And what we wanna do is we wanna work through these and just break these up. Just break it up, oh, there's one right there. Feel that right there, okay? Now, the one back here, it's called the peroneus longus, okay? Generally not a big problem, but sometimes at the very top of the peroneus longus, there are two muscles in the back here. One is called the soleus and the other one's gastrocnemius. And right at this point back in here, as you can see right here, you wanna work in here, and sometimes, yep, there it is right there. And you wanna get in there and just, just break that up, okay? Now, in between these two muscles is a, is a tiny muscle, and it goes right to the toes down here. It's called the, the extensor digitorum longus. And we go right down here, and generally with the extensor digitorum longus, right down in the middle, we find a problem right in here. And so again, you can break that up here like this. Some people use apparatuses. One, one way is you can get a tool, anything, a metal bar like this, a bit of the lotion, and you can just get in here and just, just gently work these things out. Work these things out, okay? And you feel a little bit of grisly there. Can you feel that right there? Yeah, okay, and just work that out, just stretch it out. These things are quite pernicious, and you wanna keep at these. And, but I promise you if, you, if you just work on this area here, feel around, be very specific. Nothing's dynamic unless it's specific. Feel where that nodule is, get in there and break that up. Okay, break that up and break that up. If you keep at this for a couple weeks, if you did this every day, for a few minutes every day, you get massive improvement and should, should take this problem away, okay? Now we have Jane face down and we're gonna look at the muscles on the back of the leg and the two muscles as I mentioned earlier is the deeper one is called the soleus and the one on top is called the gastrocnemius. And all I, what I want you to, these are generally not major players in plantar fasciitis, but what you, want, you want to investigate this. So you want to just run your finger along here and see if there's any nodules or calcification. And generally with, the, with, the, with these two muscles, it's down at the base down in here. You can feel, and I don't know if you feel that, Jane, right there, big nodule right there. And again, you want to just kind of work that out, break this up, work this, work this out, work this out here like that, okay? 
I'm gonna turn this over here and then you can see on this side over here, same thing. The, the line between the, the gastrocnemius and soleus muscle. And again, generally in this case, it's down at the base here. And you feel that right down in here. And we're just gonna break that up and work that out. Okay, so this is how we address this. You wanna feel it right here, right at the belt line. And this is where the hip is rotating back here like this. And so what I did was I, I got a dish towel, a small face cloth or something like that, right at the belt line. You wanna put that in there on the one side, in this case, her right side, and she just lies back on that and that balances the hips out and it retrains the muscles and the feet are pointing straight up. How does that feel? Really good. Fantastic. And this is real simple. You could do this 10 or 15 minutes a day and this will help retrain your pelvis into the right orientation. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, and this is one of my favorites, this is lymphatic work. And this is, this goes back, this has been memorialized for thousands of years. And the ancient Greeks used to use sandbags to move the lymphatics. And remember, there's more lymph in your body than blood. And so what we wanna do is we wanna compress, we wanna create a biological vacuum in the body and that has amazing healing properties. And so what I did was I went to a local chemist or drugstore and we bought these bandages, right? We're gonna start at the toes and we're gonna work our way up. We're gonna leave it on for about five or 10 minutes and then take it off, move around. We're gonna, and then we're gonna keep repeating the process two or three times just to get this thing going. This is something you could do every day and it's fantastic. It has, the, you'll get the best results out of this alone. Okay, so let's get into the stretching of the foot muscles and the leg muscles. Now, most of what's being discussed on, on almost exclusively online is to take the to this position here, pulling up on the toes, stretching the muscles in here and of the, of the leg. But I want you to think about this for a second. Plantar fasciitis is inflammation of the collagen fibers on the base of the foot, sometimes even calcification. And so if you're pulling up like that, what you're doing is you're actually exacerbating the problem. You're making things worse. You're creating Those of you who are doing those, those kind of exercise, pulling up on a towel or, or stretching, pulling up this way, how does it feel? It, it, you know, you have to use critical thinking here. And if it doesn't feel good, chances are it's not the right thing for you. And so I'm going to challenge you to not do that and to try something else. We're going to actually do the opposite of that. Here we go. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually turn you around. You're going to, on your knees. And what we're doing here is we're elongating. Remember these muscles in the front here, particularly the anterior tibialis. And we're going to nice, nice long stretch like that. And you can feel that instead of taking it the other way. And so if you can gently just sit down like this and just apply a little bit of pressure on the heels. You feel a nice stretch here. How's that feel? Pretty good. Good. And then lastly, if you can tolerate this and you, or you can work up to this, you can actually reach underneath here and then just stretch it a little further. Pull up on that. And you feel that nice deep stretch there. Can you feel that? Yes. Perfect. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked the video, give us a and if you didn't like it, there's another option. You can do this, okay? Take care. We'll talk to you real soon.